Yeah, I, I know that when you, when you say about procrastination, it, uh, I heard a, a talk and he, uh, and, the, and he said that it takes about two years for a company that, uh, sh it, that was uh, disturbed by a disruptive innovation to think about a strategy, mm -hmm. to think what could be done or should be done. And mm -hmm. it takes two years for a company. And you know, like a startup in two companies could be a unicorn worth $1 billion, so more or less. Right. Um, the, the, the timing and the time it takes could be, should be adjusted to what is needed. And if you shorten the time from thinking to doing, uh, it, it really gives you an advantage. This is how yeah, I especially in, in, a, in a period of uh, inflection points, you know, when uh, you do this, you, you need to do this uh, as a corporate, for example, you don't need to do that, uh, this thing of rethinking uh, your business model, for example, every 10 years, you need to do it uh, every six months. Uh, and, uh, and if you, if you, every time it happens, you wait two years to put everybody on the same page, then it's going to be very hard for you to catch up with D2C innovators that are going to cut chunks of, of your market away. Yeah, and, and do you see like companies doing that every six years or every year even? I mean, the the companies that are mostly innovative at the moment, I see some of them, uh, they essentially have embraced uh, a way to uh, just avoid doing this uh, uh, in a top-down uh, manner. So uh, they have been uh, unbundling and fluidifying their own uh, their own organizational structure, so they don't don't even need to think about that. So because that happens uh, at the edge of the organization in a very organic and continuous way. Uh, so some companies are doing it. Some others, I would say, the vast majority are just playing this innovation theater that uh, you know very well. I mean, uh, that's the uh, most challenging aspect of uh, innovating in a corporate. You know, that uh, um, uh, you know the environment tends to value a slide uh, as much as uh, an experiment. And uh, this is a very problematic topic. Yeah. So what do you think is like, why do companies do this innovation theater? So I, I understand the PR marketing aspect of it, but I believe that they don't know really how to play the game. And that's why they're doing this theater. What do you think? Well, the theater aspect is uh, mostly related to uh, social, social and uh, cultural elements. And you know? also, uh, you know, you be familiar. You would be probably familiar with the work of uh, David Graeber, you know, that uh, complained um, anthropologist uh, when he referred to this idea of bullshit jobs. And you know? also, you have this position, you have this title attached to your to yourself, and then. Uh, uh, nothing else counts. You know, it's just how much you can uh, uh, consolidate that position, uh, even if uh, it's attached to a ton of uh, technical and organizational debt. Uh, as long as you are protected, you don't need to be effective. You don't need to be learning, you know, because uh, uh, the laws, the policies, uh, uh, the culture protects you. Uh, and uh, that's an issue that is stronger, uh, especially in Europe and uh, in the US. But in Europe, most of all, and that's why, for example, Europe has uh, uh, the uh, most lagging startup ecosystem or innovation ecosystem uh, overall, no? because our culture is a culture of protection of the workers. And um, that's one thing. Uh, the, uh, so the, the theater part is more a social and cultural element, while uh, the uh, lack of capability to actually innovate is more a complex uh, topic, is, uh, is related to... Um, uh, I would say uh, the fact that we are transitioning in a new uh, age and uh, this transition has been happening uh, much faster than anyone in the corporate space has been able to cope with for structural reasons, uh, mainly, uh, you know, the fact that the organizational model we used uh, has been optimized for certain types of business models that uh, have generated the success and the uh, lots of inertia. So the, the, I would say that... Um, uh, the, the, the problem is twofold. One is uh, cultural and one is uh, really technical, technological. So uh, considering an organizational model as a technology, 
uh, uh, our organizational technology is not uh, ready. And uh, this is uh, also, I think, interesting um, uh, if you consider that most of the organizational innovations we are seeing, especially in the corporate space, are coming from China, that, has, that doesn't have this industrial organizational tradition that we have. Yeah, the fact that Europe is mainly uh, built on manufacturing capabilities uh, makes it hard for, for, for the leaders of these like industries to think as a technical or a, a software product related uh, processes, which are so different and, and the business model is different, the revenues are different, the way that you could grow is different, so forth. It, it reminds me that I heard like a few like weeks ago, somebody said that the Hilton uh, hotels, it took uh, 93 uh, years in order to build 600,000 rooms. And it took about, I think, five years for Airbnb to get 2 million rooms mm -hmm. out there. So the, the, how fast it could be, right? They didn't build a room, but they gave a solution to the same problem, right? So the, the, the fact that it's so fast is something that is so um, alien for them, I guess, and that makes it hard for them to, to think about it this way. Yeah, definitely, definitely. This is the inertia part, but I think also um, the, the question is not just in the processes that these companies have been running, for example, manufacturing, but also in the, um, really in the expectations of, uh, uh, you know, how do you relate with work? You, know, you relate with work as a thing that happens, uh, uh, you know, at some stage of your life. And uh, uh, at least this is the classic way to relate with, to work and in Europe, for example, and then it goes, uh, uh, it's enough for you to do your to do your job, you know, which is uh, yeah. this uh, crazy idea. But also the IP, the relationship we have with IP, intellectual property in Europe and the US, uh, has been uh, also, I think, slowing down a lot uh, our capability to uh, deal with the, the competi competition and deal with uh, uh, new things coming up. While, for example, Chinese, uh, 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 the, the Chinese culture is much more friendly to. Um, shared IP, uh, if you are familiar with the uh, uh, Shanzai topic. And in, so in general, uh, I, I think that our, uh, let's say, industrial management um, uh, tradition uh, of success, of course, uh, is now a big, big uh, issue for, uh, for European and, and US uh, at some point uh, organizations, especially the incumbents. So what do you think is the biggest obstacle for innovation for companies today? Well, I mean, as I said, the more or less uh, uh, policy is one. So the fact that uh, um, our uh, legislation around the jobs, for example, is so protective mm -hmm. for the worker. This is mm -hmm. one thing. Uh, then, uh, as I said, uh, um, our uh, um, culture, so our inability to uh, question the value of the work we do. So uh, when you're saying culture is like the company culture or the country culture in general? Well, uh, I mean, uh, it's very much more a problem of, uh, uh, of um, uh, European culture, for example, or in general, uh, you know, it's a, it's a mix. Uh, uh, if you if you think about the culture of work we have in Europe and mostly mostly in the US, is related to the Protestant ethic of work and is uh, very much deeply related to the idea of a bureaucracy. Um, so uh, it's hard to untangle European culture, for example, of uh, work from the story, the history that we have, which is an history of uh, col colonialism and uh, an history of uh, uh, st um, structured and. Uh, uh, dominating organizations, uh, um, it's 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 really it's really complex. But uh, yeah, I think the culture as a whole, uh, it's um, it's too important, you know, to some extent to to change uh, as fast as we should uh, yeah. now in this moment. Uh, yeah, so this I is another thing, is. and of course the the last part is the inertia uh, due to past success. You know, companies have business models that. Uh, uh, have been working for decades, and so now you know what is happening, uh, and they don't get these um, uh, this, the fact that I think we live through a, a nexus at the moment. You know, it's a nexus between two ages, 
and uh, and um, and uh, yeah, they they seem to be too attached to the 